welcome all of you nana here and then in this session we are going to have a look at the receipt accounting <clears throat> so before i start i would like to have a small marketing of my training actually so you go to my share my screen uh so if you go to my website oracle nana.com right oracle nana.com is my website actually you can go to oracle nana.com you can read what i do now right so my training is a speciality so when compared to other trainers uh, you will not get the contact details of the other trainers actually and then after say self put score in other places actually and then uh, many of them will not have an implementation experience at all that, that is the biggest problem the coverage will be at a high level and so you will only have to dig deep into the topic and whereas even though i say that i am covering basics only but i cover beyond basics actually so if you go on and click on the link you know, i myself this one now i click on this link will be taken to one more screen so this is a basically a agenda for a training on inventory and procurement so it lasted for about 3 months now actually fine start on 19th of june 2021 it got ended the course is now completed so what you can do is you can now as of now there is no training program planned actually uh, because not much of the students are there actually <clears throat> so here uh, what you can do is uh, you can buy any of the records actually fine inventory is now sold separately procurement separately order management separately and then uh, there are 20 module records are there which are clubbed together and then you will not pay this. it is via payment gateway so it will not accept your credit card debit card upa etc etc even if you are an abroad if you have a card which has got a two factor authentic authentication then it will accept it is a payment gateway actually so any countries uh, cards the debit cards and credit cards it will accept right so if your card is not having a two factor authentication then you can even pay via paper actually paypal is slightly expensive because you are paying the paypal charges also you know and that's why it's slightly expensive but otherwise here you don't pay any extra money at all fine no extra money at all <clears throat> exactly you pay this and then you can even look at the agenda of both inventory and procurement order management agenda is there thank you for letting me come out there if you click on the link it will not show you what are the 20 modules which are included now fine it will not show you so total of these records are my records so i conduct the training in a different different phases and then it will be there so you'll be getting both the records and documentation <clears throat> and then afterwards eight are basically bought and sold so for which i don't have any documentation basically so this much will be given to you so you can uh, what happens i have the records basically. so totally 20 and then i will now add you to my telegram group so you have to ping me after payment you ping me at, at oracle nana and telegram group i will now add you to my past friends group and then when you are struck <clears throat> we will definitely look at it and then we will now give you a solution and then during practice also you are getting struck you will definitely some one of us either me or somebody will definitely assist you actually. so in a what's called a what's in a telegram group will be doing it so this is how it is so it will definitely be worthwhile and then the, the price is not very heavy actually fine you can very well do it no fine you can initially buy a inventory and then see but how it's good now and then afterwards you can even think of buying others actually so this we can do it so in the bottom here are arriving again the worksheet of inventory and procurement and how all the right now so this is also available in this place no fine if you click on it you can also see the agenda over here so that's all about it uh, as far as my training is concerned i am one of the best trainers in the world actually and i cover the subject in such a great depth so which nobody covers in the market actually so it will definitely be a very great use to you actually so let us hope that you also join the bandwagon of my past students actually <clears throat> so make a purchase and then prosper on the fusion that's it about my website actually and oracle nana dot com okay fine now we are into receipt account so we are going to have a look at the receipt account <clears throat> so first we will now go there and then have a look at the <coughs> cost profiles on the vision actually <coughs> we are working on the vision actually <coughs> so we will now go to the default cost profile of this so we will now go to the setup and maintenance and then that click on it we will now go to the search and then we will manage default cost profile so manage percentage default percentage cost percentage profile percentage so we will manage default cost profiles so in vision uh, we have what <coughs> so there are ready madely everything is available actually <coughs> so we are going to have a look at it now so what exactly is there so this is the cost organizations us operations and then cost book is financials actually so for which they have no uh, the asset and expense cost profiles are category based actually <coughs> and now i click on the duplicate so let me go there and then here i will now have a look at one of the items now fine what is the star favorites i have already added 
along with the product information management. So I am not going to use a six five triple zero item for this one key product. You know, go on and read it. Check it. So go to the browse items. Go to browse items. And then no query data. We'll now see what are the category of this item actually. So it's a is six five triple zero. And click on search. You're going to have a look at the category of this one. <clears throat> So no more than so the first line is uh, basically for the master arm and click on it. Click on the hyperlink on the A six five triple zero, which is for the master arm. So it's a zero 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 is the master in vision actually. <coughs> you go there and have a look at it. So it's zero zero zero. And then we'll now go to this place now. So uh, so this item is available on the master arm. Right? Let us now go to the categories and then have a look. So we are going to have a look at the inventory category because once when you make a PO, there is no accounting at all. So if you go and then have a look at my PTP process on this, you know, have a look at the PTP process. Close the window. So let me go there and then let me open up a PTP process. So here, as soon as you make a PO, no accounting is made. So once when you receive in the gate, fine. Once when you receive in the gate. So the receiving inspection account is hit on the data side. The contra entry for the account is AP accrual actually. It'll be hitting on this. So once when you deliver it, what happened? The inventory valuation account as well as the material charge account will be simultaneously hit. And then uh, the PPV will hit only for a what's called your uh, uh, standard costing. Now we are going to go for an average costing, and so this will only hit. And then the gate entry gets relieved, and the receiving inspection gets knocked off. So the remaining accounting entries are AP accrual to your material charge account. As far as the purchasing is concerned, and then it is the inventory valuation to offset account. As far as financial accounting is concerned, so we are going to see this accounting. You know, we are going to have a look at this accounting. And this accounting, I am going to have a look at. So this will not be discussed over here. So this one. So these are all inventory receipts, and so what about the inventory category is very very important. If you go and then see now, fine. So the inventory item, you know, having printers and printer products is the category for this item. You know, see what exactly is the uh, cost setup. So if you go to the manage default cost profiles for the printers, for the printers and printer products, for the, for the US financials, operations and financials. So it's basically what average cost. The asset cost profile is average cost. So we are going to use this item for the average cost actually. Fine, it's not done. So let us now go there and then straight away create a purchase order. Fine. So whenever uh, this item is being transacted upon, you will be having what the average cost is being given. <clears throat> so there are four types of costing method. Fine. So one is a standard cost, one is an average cost. One is the uh, LIFO cost, and then one is the FIFO cost. But uh, FIFO is only come. Uh, LIFO is not come. And there is called the actual cost. There are two costs now. Fine. One is the LIFO and FIFO. Uh, the FIFO has come. LIFO is yet to come actually. So we have only three costing methods as far as FIFO is concerned. The LIFO is yet to come actually. Okay. So my my thing, which is having a printers and printer products as a category on the inventory, is now going to follow the average cost fine, as as an asset profile. And that's a profit average cost. So it's not done now. Now go on and get a purchase order for this direct. Now click on done now. Now go on and get a purchase order. So click on it. Now go to the home icon. We already put it on the what's called the favorites now. So go to the favorites and then now go to the PO overview. Now now create a PO now directly. Click on it and then here I will now go to the create order. So the create order is there. So purchase order, purchase order. I will not use the ABC Consulting supplier actually. Fine. Let me put the ABC Consulting. So the side by side is coming. Fine. Everything is on. Use one now. Ship to location. Fine. Default ship to location. Somebody has modified it. I will not make a change to Seattle now. Seattle is the one. Which I'm going to modify. It. So Seattle is the one. It is for zero zero one org actually. I'm going to click on create. I'm not going to create like create the purchase order. So for the Seattle, fine. We are going to create. Seattle is zero zero one. So we are going to create it for us. <clears throat> so we are now creating a PO for AS six five triple zero. And let me open up a notepad also. So number. <coughs> we'll now copy the PO number over here now. So we are now going to get a PO for us. I am now logging in as a SCM10 dot student actually. SCM SCM10 dot student. The last name from the first name is one. The buyer actually. So I'm coming up. 
So we will now create a PO for this and go down. So the, the default shift location is here. I will now click on plus one. So the built location also will now make this here. So let me check both things. Fine. So this has been done on the configure or uh, rather uh, manage common options for payables and procurement from that is now coming. So somebody is now modified it fine. I now make it as a Seattle for this purchase order. I now click on plus one. Both the built location as well as the shift location of the Seattle actually. Well, now populate our item over here. <clears throat> so click on plus and then now populate the item over here. It is A6500 is the item. And then which belongs to printers and printer products. And then uh, that belongs to a default asset category of average cost actually. Average cost is the one. So it is now following that uh, uh, asset fine. So we are not uh, checking anything on the expense. We are not checking directly on the asset. <clears throat> so something has been uh, discussed by the what happens, the purchase officer. He will be populating the terms fine, like the shipping method for everything. We will not go there. We will not populate the area. Yes, six five triple zero. So this is the item which I am going to use now. So that will be coming. Was Seattle Seattle item is already assigned to Seattle actually. Go there. So we will not go there. Click on query now. It has to come. Yes, six five triple zero. The item must be available on search. So the one more. Click on the advanced and then make a search. I don't know why it's not coming. And the item contains again. Uh, equals less than greater than contains. I'm putting now six five. Click on search. <coughs> uh, it's not coming at all. So there is some modification on the financial setups actually. So we'll now go there. So somebody has a uh, modified it actually, and then go to the place. We'll now go there. Click on cancel. So somebody has uh, modified it, the configure procurement business function now. So we'll now go to another bigger reset. Now go to the setup and then many many people are working on it, and so they might have modified it actually. We'll now go to the configure procurement business function. Function. So we'll now go to the configure procurement business function. Somebody might have changed the operations over here. Now make a change of this. So we'll now choose the US1 business unit. So click on OK. So the inventory org must be the master org actually. And somebody might have modified it. That is why our item is not coming there now. And so it's not modified. So we'll now make it a change to what operations. Operations are so it's not changed to operation. Click on save and close now. So now your item has to come over here. Your item has to come. Click on magnify it. It's not changed. So operations is available. Click on this. Yes, six by triple zero. It has to come. So now uh, we only have to create a new P1. Now, fine. It's not coming at all. We have cancel. So that since that is modified, you may have to get a new P1. So cancel it. And then the more go on and get a new because the things are got locked actually. So go to the create order. Go to the new so go there. This is a ABC consulting. So go there. I will not change the default shift location as here. And inside we will not change the built location. So click on create now. I'm not creating a P order. Uh, go there. Fine. Go on and change the build to also to Seattle. Seattle, yeah, change. And then click on plus one. Find this time AS five six five zero zero has to come. So AS six five triple zero right. So no, they are still not visible actually. Click on it. We may have to even log out and log in. Fine for such things. What happens? It may even expect us to log out and log in. So click on the advanced. Ah, it's not coming. You can log out and log in. So cancel it. So we not log out and log in. So for such some big changes, we may have to log out and log in. For the changes to take up sign on and sign. So click on sign on. 
the number of the people, the number of the people, people of you signed out and signed in. Click on it. You now get an order. You get an order. So ABC consulting. Click on create. This is built up in section that I This is a CFA. CFA. I change it to CFA. I change it to CFA. Click on plus. I'm going to add this one. sensing it actually. So there may be one more setup on the procurement side, not in front. It will be cancelled. So there is one more setup on the repositioning side actually. I might click on the duplicate. So the configure repositioning business function in one actually click on the setup and maintenance. <clears throat> On to the position this function. So for our business unit, I'm not at all. I'll change our business unit. Here's one business unit. So this is also not changing to operation. So here it is not showing at all because operation itself is basically what. Uh, uh, it's okay uh, because there is an item org, it must be an inventory org actually. Fine, it is not coming. Okay. So now, what else can be the problem? It should come actually. <clears throat> so, there are long over there. Assign business unit business function must be enabled there. So, that will not be a problem now. So, I'll again create the purchase order. Nobody should touch the vision actually. When people touch the vision and then they play around. So that is the problem. <clears throat> they should create the structure, but they are lazy and then they touch the vision and then make all the modifications actually. So it's safe. See if I will not. And then go on and click on create. Go down. Click on plus. So it's A65. If you keep on writing it, it has to come out. So you know results from point. So the type is what the type. There may be a different type actually. We can change to goods actually. And then we'll make it as goods. And goods are type. Right? So many defaults have been changed actually. The type has been changed. So A6. The built up is okay. Advanced and then make a search. Say contains zero. So there is some issue on this one. <clears throat> Identify the problem. The configure requisitioning business function was also not properly set. So I have set it up to operations now. Now the thing will come. It's fine. Triple zero. And put it on space. So we'll not change the built location also to say it like that. <clears throat> so this is uh, some of the common options that is coming actually. So built location, location of Seattle like that. So we'll not go for quantities. At a price of say, let us say 100. So we now have a price of 100 actually. So 100 is what is the price actually. 10,000 is the price actually. So we are now creating a purchase order on this one. So we will now go to the schedules on this one. I will now make it as a standard. 
will not go to the schedules and then we will not make it as a standard result. So we are going to make two zips, one in the gate and then we are going to put away also. So we will not receive in the gate and then afterwards we will not perform a put away. So by which two such activities will be done. Find out. Select it and then click on edit mode. Click on edit mode. Go there. So here we are making this a standard result. It's okay. So click on okay. And then we will not submit properly. Click on submit properly. So we are one six four one double five is now getting submitted now. So one six four one double five is the PV number. So this is for what? AS six five triple zero. Now is having an error now. So the people charge the account, variance account, and accrual account are missing actually. Fine. So uh, people charge the account, variance and accrual. All the three accounts are missing actually. Fine. Not correct actually. All three accounts are missing. So this is for Seattle actually. Fine. Right click and then duplicate. So we will not set up the accounts actually. Fine. All the three accounts are missing. Also, charge accrual and variance. We will not click on the home icon <clears throat> and then go to the setup and maintenance. So we go there. The vision is a problem. So each and every organization must have an entry actually. Fine. We will now choose what the manufacturing and supply chain management. And then here, I will now go to the management. Manage percentage, percentage, set percentage. So in the management mapping set, I will now choose the cost accounting. You know, set up this. So go to the management mapping set, set up the scope for this. So drop it down. And then with the cost management is the scope actually. So let us now choose the cost management. Select, save and close, we go inside. So, first of all, the charge account has to be set properly. Now go there. Material charge account is the one. I have already explained everything in my training actually. I how to set up all the accounts, which are all the accounts which are going to come now. So, in the material account, organization is the one. I go directly on it. We will not choose our, what happens, your chart of accounts actually. So, if you go and then see what are the chart of accounts. So, go to this place. Cognizant training. I go there. Go to the fourth one. And then the third one will not tell you the global, global interface structure on this map, the vision interface structure. So the third document will explain you the vision interface structure actually. So we'll now open up the third document. So we have what the chart of accounts is what US chart of accounts. So we have the ledger as US primary ledger. So we have the legal entity as this, and then the business unit as this. Right? The master org is what? 000 operations. And then our child org is 001. So by which the whole structure is like this one. We'll now go there and then have a look. Uh, Sorry. So you go to the management mapping set. Fine. Here's chart of accounts is the one. Fine. Then the chart of accounts. Fine. Go down now. Now see what exactly. So we have the account over here now. Fine. One four one triple zero is already there for the zero zero one. Fine. But even then, in this place, it's not showing you this. Fine. Give us save now. And save. And go to the actions and then go to validate. Now. I will not validate it. We'll not see what happens. What is the problem with the account? We have an account over there actually. You must enter either a requested date or a promised date. Find the one thing. So charge variance and accrual fine uh, cannot be determined according to the procurement application. And charge account cannot be determined. What's saying? So first of all, we had to give what uh, the dates actually. Find what are the lines area. So one of them is required. Now. Find the schedule one. The schedule we are going to give a date. So one of the date is the month. Find one of it. You know, say eighteen zero one. That is the date on which it is required. So click on save. <clears throat> Now go there. So it's okay. Now giving it a room. Go down. And then here, what happens? Go there. I will now go to the distributions now. So in the meantime, what happens? I will now go on and see now. The US chart of accounts. The account is already there. For the 001 is already there. So there may be some problem. So what I will do is I will now make a generic confine take over it. I will now add it. For all the orgs, I will now make it. Confined. Now, so much of a modification they have done. I will now. What happens is set as a default, set as a default for all the org. So this is now getting set as a default. So this account is now set as a default. Save and close. So the charge account is now set for all the orgs. If you go to the edit purchase requisition kind of account distributions, I will now go that one. I will now go on and edit one. We will now rebuild the account and then see whether the account is coming or not. 
So I'm in the distribution area, my nothing is there. You record the action, then we build accounts. We will, the charge account has come, the charge has come. Yeah? So because of some changes, what happens, it is not picking up actually, and so many people have made. Similarly for the variance and accrual also, we don't go on and check. Oh God, so many the problem there. <clears throat> so I will now say invoice price variance. Invoice price variance, I'm going to do it on that one. Invoice price variance, I'm going to I will now go to the US chart of accounts, then I will now make it common for all the all now. I'm going to take a copy of it. Even though we have it on 001 now, fine, but it's now giving you some error now. So I will not take copy it. And then I will not click on plus and then I will add it for the, all the all. Set as a default and then the default now. So go there. So that is now set as a default. If you go on and click on C fine, the default and then start there. And that now. So C1 flows, maybe what happens? The, the variance account is now set now, fine, we will not rebuild it. What happens? We will not find the variance account. The rebuild account, the variance account will become. And then similarly, the accrual account also has to be set. Now, go that we want. The long set of the accrual account. Accrual account is the organization level. We have got seen accounts to a great extent actually. Accrual account organization. Long go that we want. Long go to the accrual account organization. That also we are going to set it up. Now, the US chart of accounts. Because of some issues, it is happening, but it is not actually really a problem. In reality, it won't be coming. Once when you set up for your org, it has to come now, right? because people have modified so many things, and then it is now giving an issue now. And plus, go there. So I'm not paste it over here, and then I will now set as a default for all the orgs now. So that is now set to default now. And if you go up and then see now, you can see the start. Right. So go on and save and close by which all the accounts are now set now. We'll now go to this place, we'll now rebuild it, and the PO accrual account also. Now we it. So we'll be getting the accrual account also. So it's not done now. Click on okay now. <clears throat> so the total ordered amount is what 10,000 US dollars actually. 100 into 100 is 10,000 US dollars. Fine. Including taxes, if you go on and see, if you go on and click on it. Including taxes, it comes to how much? It comes to what happens the 950 is the total tax amount. Fine. The taxes are calculated at three levels now, right? state, county, and city. If you click on the hyperlink on the tax, you can now see. Fine, go there. It's a non recoverable exclusive tax, and then well, the result is 950. So, state, city, and county is the one by which the US they calculate three levels. Fine, click on okay, fine. Now go on and submit properly. So, go to actions and then go to validate. This time it will not give any issue at all because we are not set up everything for all the org. But it is actually not required because of uh, so many fiddling around. So, it is now giving a sense of uh, click on submit. So by which 164155 is now submitted for approval now. So do that. So once when it is approved, what we are going to do is we are going to make a gate. So upon PO approval, there are no accounting at all. When there is no accounting at all. Only when you make a gate receipt at the time, what happens? The accounting will stop. And the receiving inspector will be hitting on the return side, and then the accrual will be hitting on the credit card side. So 100 points is at the 100. So it is at 10,000. So if you go and then see that, what's called uh, the thing now. So I'll now go and then have a look at this one. What the manager orders, <clears throat> and then see whether it is approved or not. So 164155. Fine. 164155. I already said the approval to automatic actually. I'll we'll now see whether it is now getting approved or not. Fine. So he the guy who's making it fine. So pending approval. If you click on the hyperlink of it, it will now show you the progress of the approvals actually. Fine. So we had to wait for some time now. So once when it is done, whatever we can do it. So in the meantime, what happens? I'll now go there, click on it. We'll now go to the uh, receipt part of it. Thank you on it. We'll now go to the home icon and then we'll now try to receive it actually. We will now go to the supply chain execution. We'll now go to the supply chain execution. And then you go to the inventory management. And then we are going to make a receipt. So inventory management and click on it. We will now receive it actually. So go there. I will now go to the receipts and then go to the receive expected shipments on this one. Receive expected shipment level one and one. So the purchase order number, I'm going to put it on the purchase order 164155. 164155 is the one. So go that you can tap. So if it is approved, it's becoming fine. 164155. And I click on search now. So once it is approved, it's becoming. So it is not at approved actually. We had to wait for it. Click on it. You know, go on that. Search for it. So click on search. It is still pending approval only. It has to become open now. For now it has become open. So if it is open, what happens if you make a search, it will be coming out. And you're going to make a gate receipt for the 100 commodities. 
So click on search 164155 is now upload. Go right now. So here uh, we have to first of all change the org to 001. I find that way is not coming. Okay. So click on the change org. So it has to be changed to what 001. I now remove it and then click on change org to 001. Okay. 001 so I am in the 001 R and then I click on it. I will not perform a result. So go to the results and then go to the receive expected shipments. 164155 is the number now. 164155. 164155 is the number. So we're going to make a search for it. 164155. So click on search. Just show me the structure. 164155. One six four one five zero is only coming, but what happens? One six four one five five is not coming at all. One six four one five five. So we'll again go to the orders and then have a look at it. Click on the hyperlink of it and then see what is your delivered location actually. So delivered location must be Seattle actually. I have not set up but only Seattle actually. We click on it. By working on it, what happens? Something might have got changed or I don't know what exactly is doing. So the PO has to have a delivered location as what Seattle actually. Uh, I go there. So the ship location is Seattle. I'm going to go down here also. What happens if you go there? What is it? Schedules. The schedules. So location is Seattle actually. So here they might have made one mistake actually. The location or type they might have fiddled around almost. So let us now go and then, uh, address the text. So I will now go to the manage locations. So they might have filled the round on this also. So click on the location organization type has to be proper actually. So go to this place, go to the manage locations. You go to what? Set up and maintenance. So they might have filled around. So fiddling on the visions one, it is really, really bad actually. People are lazy in uh, setting up their own structures and then they fiddle around on the on this manage the switch. So before it's what I'm going to go to the manage inventory or manage inventory or you know, query this or you know, see whether what are the location which has been kept over here actually. So the organization is what 001 and search, you know, is on and search for. <clears throat> so edit it and then how do I find this Seattle only? Right. So this is not, not fiddled around fine, it's okay, Seattle. So we'll now look at the what's called your location. Right. The organization is perfect. The organization is now having a no, 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 no. We'll now go to the manage location in this series. Manage locations. Manage location. So I'll not go there. I will not query for the CFA. And see whether the tie is proper or not. Go there. So there are plenty of uh, location sets have been made now. And the CFA is a lot of God. So many they have made now. For different, different location sets they have made CFA. Like, this is all not correct at all. I mean, what to do with this? Uh, 15011. One, go there. Click on uh, edit and then update. Now. Click on edit and update. This has to have the or properly. So when you fiddle around on the basic setup sufficient, it will be fine. The inventory org itself is missing. So the inventory org never now make it as what CFA. CFA. So click on it, click on submit. So the location of is a must actually. So there's no title, the same location is no title, it's all. Right. 
so you know go there you know see on the other ones there should not be any data on it for correct actually there should not be any data first one should not have any data the no tie is there thing you can see second one also should not have any tie there is no inventory of tie so no go there so click on done and then come on the second one also should not have second one I go there so it is in a different location set is okay fine is also different location and the common set only we are bother about fine so it is already tied now now we'll now go there and then try to receive it actually so the location not tied to the inventory or you know so we'll now go to this place and check on them we'll now go and then try to receive it actually <coughs> who has changed all these things i don't know so many people do a lot of warranty on this to go to the inventory or So you are now learning it also in this way. <laughs> Click on it. So we now go to the man. There is the expected shipments. So one six four. One five five zero one. So one six four one five five zero one. Click on search. It has to come. I'm still not coming. I need to do all this. So I will now do one thing. I will now log out and log in and then come out. Sometimes when you make some changes, you may have to log on and log in. Or otherwise, I have to only duplicate the purchase order. And sign out and sign in. Click on confirm. So now sign in and then go. So so we go there. I will now go to work. Supply chain execution. I will go to the inventory. Receives and then you go to the manage. Receive expected shipments and then you're going to have all the data. So one six four one five five is the one you are done. It is not a one. So now change the one. Change the one. Change the one to zero zero one. And change the one to zero zero one. So click on it. And then receive expected shipments for the zero zero one or one six four one five five zero one. One six four one five five. So it's not working. That means what? Uh, it is already got affected actually. So what we have to do is we have to go and then uh, uh, duplicate this. What the people of you will now duplicate this people. Click on it. Go to the PO overview. The no query this and then not duplicate it. All these places. You go to the manage orders. Find the no query the order now. One six four one five five zero one. So let me go and then search for it. So it's not coming up. Select it and then go to actions and then go to duplicate. Find the one duplicate. Duplicate. That. So we are not duplicated it. We are not submit properly. There is no change at all. Simply I duplicated it. So one six four one five six is the number. Find that one. Not change to one six four one five six actually. Total new price ten thousand. Submit properly. So we are not going to query. Six one six four one five six is the one I'm putting it. So one six four one five six is now approved actually. Now go there, click on the number, now go to the receipt. Now go to what you have this now and the favorites now. To the receipt accounting for information not there. So now go to the home now and now make a receipt. You go to the supply chain execution inventory management. One six four one five six is now approved and duplicate it. Take note. So the inventory or location type is a must actually, and somebody has removed it. So now go there. Go to the receive expected shipments. So one six four one five six in the one nine one. One six four one five six in the one. Click on search. So 
So the copying of the PO also didn't work. So I made a new purchase order. Fine, a new purchase order I made it is one one six four one five seven actually. And then I made it for what thousand rupees thousand dollars per unit actually. And so the total price is how much? It is a hundred thousand actually. So hundred thousand. I made a change also. Fine, it's a hundred thousand actually. So hundred pieces, but thousand. So hundred thousand is the one. And PO number is there. Now it will be coming. And when I made a new PO, it's coming. When I copied it also, it didn't get. So receive expected shipments and go that amount. So one six four one five seven is the one. And then I click on search. I click on search for it. It's not coming. And select and then click on receive. And you can receive it. So click on receive. We are receiving it. So we are making a gate receipt of it now. We will go on and put up a GRN number also in this place. So the GRN number goods receipt note number. GRN number. So click on the show receipt quantity. It won't show you as hundred actually. It is a quantity based receipts. So each is now one thousand dollars actually. I made it actually. So it will not show you how much is expected from the supplier actually. So we are going to make a gate receipt. So once when the gate receipt is made, then what happens? Sir? The receiving inspection account will be hit, and then the contract entry will be approved. So only when you push it into costing, right? So to account it, we have to push it into costing. Then only the accounting will happen. So we are now doing it. Fine, hundred quantities. Fine, click on create receipt. We are going to create receipt. So click on submit now. We will now put the shipment number. Fine, go that the packing slip number, and then the shipping method. Go that one. I want to the shipping method. Of course, it is not available. So number of units is what four. And the bill number, <clears throat> fine bill of lading number. So these are all additional value additions actually. So once we give a value addition, it will be very useful for you to analyze all the every GRN actually. So by which a GRN number gets created actually. <clears throat> so the GRN number gets created in the gate actually. So five one seven seven two is the one. So five one seven seven two is the GRN number. Five one seven seven two. Fine. Get on okay now. <clears throat> And then we'll not deliver it. We'll not perform a put away. No, we'll not perform a put away for this one. Click on it. We'll not go on and perform a put away. So click on put away receipts. So click on put away receipts. We're going to put away. So go there. It's five one seven seven two is a GRM number. I'm going to click on search. Click on search for it. Select and then click on put away. We are not putting it away. We are putting away ABC Consulting as a supplier and other commodity. So the sub-inventory is stores actually. Put away into stores. Find out. I will not put it away into stores. And commodities. Can click on submit. Find out which shipping order. So the submit is now done for what the one put away transaction was created actually. So now both the things are not done. Now we are going to push it into costing area. We have to push it into the costing area. So before pushing into costing, whatever we'll now go there and then how we go to the costing area. Fine, the receipt accounting we're going to have. It. So we'll now go to the receipt accounting overview. We'll now what happens? We'll now note down the important futures. So as of now, nothing. The cost of receipt is nothing. So we have an exception of fine receipt accounting exception is what six point six eight three seven actually. Fine, six eight three seven is the one. Fine. We have exceptions. Six eight three seven. Fine, six eight three seven is the one. Fine, there's exception actually. Go near it to not show you the exact value. So six eight three. And then go there. We will now see what happens. The unmatched accrual. Now. Unmatched accruals. In the unmatched accruals, if you go and then have to write down that. So this is the one. So the green color is what receipt accounting. Receipt accounting. In the unmatched, what happens? I will now say receipt accounting. So receipt accounting. We will now see how much it is. Now go near it. Fine. Six seven four three million. Fine. Six point seven four three million. Six point seven four three million. So this much is not map matched at all. No. Fine. If you go the yellow line, fine. The difference actually. Difference is six point seven zero four million. Six point. Six point. Seven zero four. Six point seven zero four. So six point. One zero four million. So this is the difference actually. Fine, six point seven four three and then seven zero four actually. So what happens? Sir? Around thirty nine is the one which has been accounted actually. One thirty nine. One zero three nine is the one. So this is fine. green is there and then uh, this is the difference. And then accounts payables. Fine, accounts payable. 
Já com os peitos. Table is what? How much? <coughs> so go there. Many go there. It's a zero point zero four million. <coughs> so with the unmatched accruals, we have got this much of information. So the unmatched accruals. So we have a result accounting, and then we have the difference of the accounts payables. This much. Fine. There are three values which are available. So let us now push it into costing area and then see the cost of result sector. Now right click on the duplicate. We are going to push it in the costing area. <sighs> Go there. So click on it. Go there. So we will now go to tools. <clears throat> now go to the tools. And then here we will now go to the scheduled process. So transfer transactions from receiving to costing is the one which will now push the received data in the gateway. There are three types of results which will now happen in this place. My mother, the transfer, transaction, to cost. So there are three results which will take place in the gate now. Transfer transaction for receiving cost, microtransaction, the receiving to cost, and transfer transaction for receiving cost. So click on OK now. So we are now going to transfer it from the receiving to costing. Fine. There are three types of results which takes place in the gate. One is what the PO results. One is what uh, uh, one is what the supplier uh, returns also will now go via gate one. Fine. Supplier returns will be going via gate actually. And then one is an RMA result which will be coming. And then one more one fourth one is what the intra transfers. So when you perform an intra transfers on an in transit route, it will be eating. And then the transfer orders also when you are doing it, they will also be eating. Fine. You can even say fire whatever it is. So that many will be coming via gate actually. Thank you for something. So the transfer orders will be getting the gate, and then the in transit, intra intra transfers in transit also great, and then the supplier returns also will now go via gate, as well as the RMA results from the supplier will also, when the customer also will now come and then hit the gate actually. So it's not running. So it is not transferred actually in this place. So now it has been transferred. It will now be getting pushed into the interface tables of receipt accounting. So once when you transfer the transaction from receiving to costing, it will now go on and hit the interface tables of receipt account. So once when it is completed, you won't see anything on the receipt area at all because it is in the interface area of receipt accounting. So once it is completed, transfer transaction from receiving to costing, and receiving to costing, it will not do anything. And the next concurrent is what? We have to transfer the transaction from inventory to costing. Uh, so that will be responsible for what happens this one. Fine. So these, so now, you, once it has now reached the interface tables, so once when you bring it to the base tables, you will now see the receiving inspection heading on the dead side, and then the accrual will be getting on the credit side. And then once when you transfer from inventory to costing, these two accounting entries will be made. Now. They will now go into the interface tables of costing, and then finally, once when you bring it pull in, it will be coming to the base tables. So now we have pushed into the interface tables of costing. So once it is completed, it now succeeded actually. So if you go there and then if you go and then refresh it now, right? the refresh by count and click on the refresh now. If you refresh it, the cost of results is still nothing. Okay. So let us now bring it from the interface table to the base table. Thank you. We'll now bring it to the interface table to the base table. Thank you. So click on the receipt accounting distribution. So once you do it, so the data which has now reached the interface tables of receipt accounting will be brought to the base tables of this. So the business unit is what? Here's what? Thank you. Thank you. So yeah. <coughs> It will be brought from the interface table to the base table section. <coughs> so 842 concurrent is running actually. Now go there and then click on monitor it. The receipt accounting distribution is now getting created actually. Create receipt accounting distribution. So now the import transaction, the interface of receipt accounting into the base table is now running. Now, right? So the import transaction is now running. So once when this is now passed, it has now spawned a child. So once when it is completed, the parent will run it. So the import transactions. So we have all pushed it by this by this concurrent. We are now pushing it the data from the inventory into the interface tables of receipt accounting, and then by bringing in whatever this is now going to bring in from the interface table to the base table. Actually. So the import is now running. So once when the import gets completed, then afterwards what happens? You now see that the receipt accounting will be running. So the receipt accounting will be running.
So we're still running now, fine. The port transaction is running. So once when it is completed, the parent will run now, fine. So once when it is run, what happens? You can now see the cost of receipts will be 100,000 US dollars. It will be 100,000 US dollars. So it is because $1,000 is each one, and then the cost of receipt will be coming up here. Click on it. Don't go there. It's not still running. So while running itself, what happens? It may even get what was updated now. Fine. Click on the refresh icon. Fine. Click on the refresh icon. Now see. And the cost is not going to come out of one account. We'll wait for it. So the distributions are getting created on the receipt accounting area. The distributions are getting created by the import transaction. So go there and then click on refresh. Refresh. No point. There's no point. Not it come. Click on it. So click on it. So it's still running. So it's not big concurrent actually. Import transaction is another busy from interface for the accounting. Maybe it may be having a lot of items also. Fine. So many things have been received, and then for each and everything, it will be coming. I'm not sure about whether only or 100,000 will come or not. Fine. Something may also come extra also. <clears throat> so it's not running up and Great. The sub process is now running up and So once then this is completed, this is now passed. And then again, what happens there? Result of funding. Sub process is now running. So we had to wait for those things to complete now. The sub process is not coming. So it may even be more than 100,000 actually. Because so many people might have made a gate receipt for the Seattle organization, actually. <clears throat> so it may even be more than that fine, because of so many things. So it is now getting accounted, actually. So by pushing it, all the receipts made in the gate, everything will be brought in the base table section. Now still run. So will now go there and then click on refresh. Now fine, click on refresh. You want to see cost of receipts. In the past seven days only. Seven days means only hours will be coming. So it's now coming as 110K, actually. Fine. Uh, if you go there, fine. Is a tax fine? Tax is nine point five. Fine. This is the base one. Fine. Is hundred k. So the hundred k from the only for the last seven days is okay. Hundred k is our material value. And then the balance is what nine point five k is the tax actually. So put together is what one not nine point five k is now giving a roundabout value. <clears throat> so the exception has got changed actually from that one. So previously the exception is what. So don't worry about the exception. Exception we are not worried of fine. Six point eight k now is nineteen point two k now. Fine. So uh, there is some exception which is running time that one time. So this is the one which has now got updated on the monitor So it is not done. So the 100k receipts, right? so 100,000, right? 100,000 receipts is now got succeeded. So let us now go there and then see this. Now I click on it. Now go there. <clears throat> we'll now have a look at it. So go to the review receipt accounting distribution. Review receipt accounting distribution. We are going to do it now. So item is what AS 6500. And then it is a transaction date on or after 11th only because uh, nobody would have made it after this point. Click on search. So once when you search for it, what happens? It will show you this. <clears throat> so it is now saying what happens? The Seattle and then the distribution is now processed. Fine. Distribution is processed and go for that. It will now show you what the purchase order number. And then afterwards you go for that. You go for that. Fine. It is a description. Fine. So 51772 is the GRN number actually. Fine. It will now show you the supplier on site. Actually, it is a hundred quantity. Fine. Remember, the receipt accounting is basically quantity based actually, represented in money. It is a money is a representation only. Fine transaction one is 100. Not, not, not. So the quantity, the primary units of it is everything is shown. And go down on this place. It shows you the transaction taxes actually, and the purchase order cost. The transaction unit cost is what? $1,000 each actually. If you go to the distribution, you can now see the distribution of it. If you go on and see this document, so you'll now see the receiving inspection inspection order hit on the debit side, debtor side. And then the accrual would have gone to the credit card side. And that's not, you can now see the accrual has gone to the credit card side, and then the receiving inspection has gone to the debit card side. And then afterwards, the taxes are also coming. So you got three levels of taxes city, state, and county, as far as the mission is concerned. Fine, the county, there is no tax. The city and state put together is how much? 9,500 actually. So the accrual has now hit on the credit card side. Accrual has now hit on the credit card side, and then inspection has hit on the debit card side. So everything is not done fine. Now we have to go and then create our journal entries. Now. And journal entries is not created. So let us now go and then create our journal entries also. So let us now go there and then create our journal entries also. <coughs> so journal entries is not created. So we'll now go there, click on it. We'll now do the create accounting for this. So click on the create accounting. Now we are going to create our journal entries for this. 
So here is what is the receipt accounting. I'm going to now make it the receipt accounting. Ledger is what US one. US primary ledger. US primary ledger is the ledger actually. <coughs> primary. What happened? US primary ledger is the one kind. Drop it down or let's choose it. And it's not coming. I'll drop them and we'll choose it actually. Ah, it's not coming. <clears throat> so go there. So it's okay, fine. Go there. Right. So accounting mode is final, and then go there. I will not make it as a detail lecture. The detail I'm going to make it. So transfer to GL. So we can even transfer to GL because now in the vision everything is fully set actually. Otherwise, whatever we cannot do it. No fine. So since it is all set, we can even transfer to GL and then post to GL also. So we are not submitting it. So since it is a vision, everything can be done. So it will be running after. Right. Right. Now how will it? So go to the mod process. Now we are now doing the create accounting for the receipt accounting. Create receipt accounting is not running now. So once when it is completed, we can even see the receipt accounting process also. I will not pass till it runs now. So the create accounting has completed. It has now done the what happens the posting of the subledger accounting also. And we have an execution report coming up. Now have a look at the execution report. So the accounting has been done. Now go there. And then we will now republish the output actually. So click on the republish the output. Yeah, about republish the output. So click on this and then go to export to PDF. Export to PDF. So we are now exporting it to PDF actually. So click on show. So I'm now open it up. But it is not showing you that one now. So number of transactions is two now actually, and number of US ones as well. So the input source value does not map to an output value defined the mapping selection. So the receiving inspection is not done at all. Right? It is an invalid one. And receiving inspection is not done. So we'll now go on and read it. Now. You will now have a look at it inside and then we'll now see what exactly the error actually. And here it is not showing you the receiving inspection. Right? It's not showing you exactly. So there are so many things which have been done now. Right? That's why we are unable to exactly understand. This report we are unable to understand. So we will now see inside about what exactly the error actually. We'll now have a look at our small Close it and then we'll now go to the receipt accounting. So we'll now make a search again now. Click on search. Search for it in the receipt accounting. So it does not end up in error actually. Previously, distribution process came. So once when I ran it, what happens? It does not end up in error actually. We'll now go on and see now. Expand it. So receiving inspection account and expand it. The general it is the error actually. It says what the input source does not map to an output source when in the market. Receiving inspection. Uh, in the mapping set, receiving inspection, it is not set at all. Yeah. And then here, whatever we expand it, we will see what exactly it should show. So again, showing what the receiving inspection and expand it. So all of them are not showing what the receiving inspection is not set at all properly. So let us now set up this one. So we'll now set up and right click and then do it. So receiving inspection is not set up at all. So we have to set up what? Uh, receiving inspection on the receipt accounting. On the receipt accounting, we have to set up the receiving inspection. Don't go there, don't go to the home, don't go to the home, set up this. So go to the setup and make an answer. <coughs> and then we have to set up this account. So that is why on the journal entries, we had a problem. If you go there, you know, on the journal entries, if you see, we are not facing all the problems. Up to distributions is okay, fine. Right? Distributions, everything is okay. Fine, they've got distributed properly. And then you can now see on the cost also. You know, you place, you go there. Cost information is also okay. The cost information is okay. But what happens? Sir? The accounting has ended in the error actually. I will not go to this place. I will not go to what? I will not go to the what? Receipt accounting. So I will not go to the purchasing. I will go to the purchasing. Go to the procurement. Now. I will not go to the marriage mapping. Previously, we have gone to what? Your uh, uh, what's called manufacturing and supply chain management. Now we go to the procurement. Then go there. Go to the marriage mapping. And marriage mapping. On which we are going to go for receipt accounting. So this is the receipt accounting. Plan. Go to the marriage mapping set of receipt accounting on the procurement side. I'm going to go for it. And go to the management mapping set of receipt accounting. So we will now go there and then click on the management mapping set of it now. And then query for the receiving inspection. So expand it. No query for the receiving inspection. Receiving inspection. Receiving inspection. So this is our account now. So receiving inspection is not set. Then what is saying? Click on the receiving inspection. You now go there and then have a look at it. So here's chart of accounts. Click on. So we have what happens in an account for what? Inventory org one, two, three, four, four, no, four hundred and et cetera, et cetera. But not for our zero, zero, one, actually, fine. It is a zero, zero, one, fine. One may not be accepting it. So we'll now make it as a generic one. We'll now make it as a generic one. 
So it may not be 0, 0, 1, not fine. It has to be 0, 0, 1. So 1, it is not accepting it fine. Well, not. I will not click on plus, not fine. We'll not make it for all the org one entry. Okay, see? And then set is a default. So it is for all the org. So for all the orgs, we are now set the receiving inspection account. We'll go there. So it is all set actually. Fine. Go there, save and close. We will again run the create account. It is all set. We'll go there. So we will not run again the create account. We'll not again do the create account. So go there. So click on it. We'll not do the create account. So sometimes what happens is that we have to log out and log in. So any major changes, you have to suppose to log out and log in. Log out and sign out and sign in. Sign out and sign in. So click on confirm. So go there. So we'll not sign in. <clears throat> Go there and then here we will not go to this place and go to the receipt accounting and go to the receipt accounting only from there we will not run the create accounting directly. Click on it, we will not do the create accounting. <coughs> Drop it off, we will not go to the water. <coughs> receipt accounting. Ledger is US primary ledger. US primary ledger is the one. And the one. The date of the middle actually. Yes, 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 is okay. So click on submit. So we are now given it receiving inspection as what everything. So we will now go there. So this would have got, since we are logged out now, fine, we are doing them again. Go there. So we will now go to this place and click on it. We will go to the tools. We will go to the schedule to process and then have it. Since we are logged out. And again, go there and see. So this time the create accounting is again running actually. So the create accounting is running. So, we'll so wait for it to complete. So then you'll be having a create accounting execution report also is coming up. Let me pass it for some time. Now, since there is no error at all, now import journal child is running. Previously, import journal child didn't drain at all. You can see this now in this place. Create accounting. It is now executed to find because the post publisher journal is not coming, but import the journal child didn't run at all. Fine, now it's running. So that itself indicates that there is no error at all. Fine. So the errors would have got solved because we are not given it for all the org actually. So the post journals is also running. So after the import journal is coming, what happens? It will be posting the journal and we are now giving the posting also. Then afterwards, we will now see the create accounting execution report also. Even though the post journals has got blocked because of some financial problem. So that is why the create accounting is also ending in the morning. But let us now have a look at the report and we'll see whether the error is now solved or not. We'll have a look at it. Any import journal has happened. Only thing is posting had a problem. So we'll now see whether the thing is proper or not. We'll click on the republish. Export to PDF. So click on show all. So here it says what number of events process is one now. And the number of events in error is one. It's okay. Fine. Use primary ledger is one. So use primary ledger for this one. We don't have any problem. Fine. Final journal ledgers are made. Fine. There is no error at all. So for the remaining ledgers only, we are having some problem. It's okay. So for us, what about the current USD? Uh, it's for the, these errors. Now. Fine. Not for our use primary ledger actually. Not for the US primary ledger. So here uh, it's not showing all this in front of the numbers. is 100,000 actually. <clears throat> Accrual receiving inspection. And uh, it is for transaction number 1002. It is not our transaction number. Now look at it. It is not our transaction number 1002. So many transaction numbers are coming. <laughs> First of December 2020. Is the 51772 is our GR number? It is okay. Either one. So for which we have the receiving inspection hitting on the debt side, debitor side, and then the accrual is now hitting on the creditor side. So that is okay. So it's approximately 6,500 plus 9,500. So the total taxes put together is 1,009, 109.5061. So this is now come. 51772 is okay. So is the one 51772 is our GRN number for which whatever we got the correct entries actually. So it's okay. So it's not done. We'll now go on the inside and then have a look at it. We'll now go to the uh, receipt accounting and then have a look at the receipt accounting distribution. And previously, it didn't have an error. So now review receipt accounting distribution. So we'll now go to the item of it is the AS65000. So previously it was showing as an error actually. We'll now see what happened. It's finally accounted actually. So initially distribution processed, 
And then when we ran the credit accounting, it ended the error. Now we corrected the error with all our gadgets. The receiving inspection all of things like that. If you go to the journal entries, you will not find any error at all. Everything is not properly done. So if you expand it, you will show you all the information. Also. So the receipt accounting and the journal batch number. Only thing is the posting had a problem, and because of which is not having some issues. It doesn't matter. Folks. <clears throat> you know, we're not that much worried about. So six thousand five hundred is the receiving inspection fine. This is another tax nothing. So these two particular is a tax actually. Expand it. So uh, 100,000 plus 9,500 9, fine total amount. So these are all the, what happens, that these are the credit side actually, as far as the inspection is coming, right? is accrual. So accrual is not hitting on the credit side, and then the receiving inspection is not hitting on the debit side. So as per the plan, actually. So receiving inspection is hitting on, including taxes and everything. Now, the big problem is going to come. Now, payables has to make a payment for this 100 pound day. So the payable has to make a payment for this 100 pound day. So what they are saying is that, uh, uh, they are not going to ask the GST registration certificate from the supplier. Actually. He has not given. Right? So they were asked that your turnover must be approximately $1 million per year. So they told that they will not provide the documentation for the $1 million, but they are not provided. So likewise, the payables will be having a lot of questions with them, and then for which what happens is that they are not made a payment at all, but they are not provided the document. So they will not withhold something. They are going to withhold something. They are going to keep something with them. Why? They are not paid. Till they provide it. So they may withheld based upon the payable section actually. And then uh, there is another way of withholding because whatever the user is, the end user who is using the item, he is finding some problem. <clears throat> Fine. He has asked the supplier to come and rectify the fee. He has not enough. So he will now give an instruction to the payable array or keep some 5% pending actually. Fine. He retains some 5% till we give a clearance. So there are very many places where what happens, you'll be having this problem. So the, now for our understanding, what happens if you're not going to keep 10 quantities is not paid actually. And no go to the whole over there. You will not make what happens only 90 quantities we are going to make. So we will not go to this place, fine. So I will not go to what the invoice area. Click on it. We will not go to the invoice area. And that we will not pay everything. Now 10, 10 quantities. So remember, accrual is quantity based, represented in money. 100 quantities have got accrued. So it is 100,000 is the total amount now. And then taxes put together as well. 100,000 plus 9,500. So that means so accrual is basically quantity based, and then we are going to relieve the hundred quantity. Long over that long. Go to the payables, and then we long go and get the invoice and click on the invoice. So we are now going to create an invoice. So click on it, we will not get an invoice. And click on the create invoice. We are now going to get an invoice. So click on create invoice. So we are not going to pay for in the entire hundred quantities, but only for 90 quantities. So this happens in every company, and there will always be something which is not paid at all because of so many reasons actually. So this is called receipt accounting reconciliation actually. And this is a big headache for the purchase managers actually. Every company will be having so much about. Some companies, the differences of not paying maybe even in millions of dollars actually. And so they will now try to do the reconciliation on a daily basis also. So now we are going to create invoice only for 90 quantities. So the reason may be very many actually. <clears throat> So this is a big headache for the procurement managers. So as and when, what they, whatever they have purchased, they have to pay. But because of so many reasons, it is not paid actually. So we'll now go on and create an invoice for our, what happens, our PO number. And PO number is what? 164157 is the PO for which what happens, we are now going to create an invoice. So go there. <clears throat> so once when you start to create an invoice, it will now say that the entire quantity of 100 is not eligible for a payment actually because it is already received as well as it is not delivered. So we we'll go there. One six four, one five seven is the one. So go there. No sir, is the ABC concerning? Okay. Okay. So it will not show you the video as a supplier. Supplier said everything. It will not show you. <coughs> go there. Click on it. Go there. Click on it. So I will not say five thousand one is the invoice. Number. So for ninety quantities only, he's now giving the fine for that ninety ninety thousand. 90,000, fine. Uh, you are now going to make a payment only for 90,000. Uh, 10 quantity retained. 10 quantity retained. Uh, I'm also not paid. Actually. So, not paid. So, we are now retaining for 10 quantities. So, we will not go on and match it. Now. So, once when you match it, what happens? It will say the entire 100,000 will be eligible for the entire 100 quantity will be eligible for the I click on match now. We are going to match it now. 
So we're going to match it now. So we're not matching it. So once when you match it and then obtain the distribution, it will now say the entire quantity becomes eligible for a payment actually. And then we had to add taxes. So available is 100 quantities. So the payables department has now decided to pay only for 90 quantities. Actually. My order is 100, my number is. Remember, the entire receipt accounting is quantity based actually. You will now select it and then you will now make what? The quantity is 19. So 90. So he is now going to make a payment only for 90 actually. No. So he is now obtaining a match only for 90 quantities and not for the 100 quantities. Now click on apply. So click on okay. So 90 quantities, the distributions are created. So the distributions are created. So once when you create a distribution, here, what happens? The third activity, this activity is now getting created actually. The accrual is relieved, not the entire 100 quantity, but 90 quantities only relieved now. 90 quantities only relieved actually. We are now relieved only 90 quantities. So we are now creating this distribution basically. This distribution is basically. And then we will now put the taxes basically. Fine. So I will not go in the fright and miscellaneous fine. I will now put the taxes over here and then try to create the AP liability now. AP liability, I am going to create it. So we are now going to create the AP liability. So click on apply. Click on apply. And then click on OK now. So it's no play. So go there. So we have got this many now. So for 90 quantities, what happens? 90,000 is not done now. And then here there will be taxes now. How to calculate the taxes? We'll now go then validate it and then do it now. And click on save now. And save. And then we'll now validate it. While validating it, it will now calculate the taxes and say how much is the error actually. And this is actually, we had to put the error taxes. Since I don't know the taxes, fine. What happens? While validating it, it will now tell you what is the total tax actually. And then I will now current the amount and then do it now. So you're now saving it now. So you're now saving it actually. So 5001 is down. And go to the invoice action and then I'll now validate the invoice. Click on validate the invoice. We're going to make a validation of the invoice. So invoice is now needs revalidation because what happens if you go there? The total tax is what? 8550. It is 98550 is the total amount. So 98550. So we'll now calculate it. 98550.00. That is the total amount. Including taxes. Now it will now revalidate again. 98550 is the one. I will now give a save and then I will now do the revalidation. So go to the invoice action and then I will now validate it. So we are going to validate it. So the invoice is now getting validated. It will be getting validated. Fine, do not have any error at all. It is validated. So now, once when the validation is completed, we will now do the create accounting for this one. So we'll now go that you want. So we have any create accounting here now? I'm not there at all. So we'll now go to the receipt accounting and then do the create accounting for the payables actually. So for the payables, we're going to make a receipt. So go that. So it is now validated. So this much of uh, amount has been done now. Fine. Right? So we'll now go to the receipt accounting. We'll not do the create accounting. Right? We can now do create accounting from here itself. We'll not do the create accounting from here. We'll not go to the create accounting. For the payables, we're not doing. So up to invoice creation only we're done now. Up to, not the payables, not the payments actually. So go that you want. So we will now go to the payables now. We'll now go to the payables, the payables. So go there. It is a US primary ledger. Go there. US primary ledger. So final all or I will now make it the data plan for the ISS. So we are now doing the payables accounting actually. So if you go on and see in this place, what happens if you go on and click on it now? And then you know if you, if you click on the validated, you know, go that you want. It will now say, and they click on the hyperlink on the validated. <clears throat> it is not yet accounted actually. So, but invoice is now created only for 90 quantities. There is a difference actually. And this difference is a big one, big problem for the procurement. Also. Accounting is unaccounted, actually. validated. Payment is not paid. So, let us now go there, go to the create accounting fine here. We're going to submit now. So, the payables one, we are going to get the create accounting. So, we are now submitting the accounting for this one. Right? So, now the concurrent is running now. On the month process. Don't have a look at the conference. Create accounting is now running. So we'll wait for some time. I'll now pass the recording now. So the import journal child has also come. Fine. This is for what your uh, invoice, not for the payment. Like payment, we are not done now. Fine. Only invoice creation has been done now. So we are now created the distribution for the invoice. And then we are now accounting it also. And for the cost accounting purposes, the accounting is not a mandatory audit. Accounting is not a mandatory one. So we can even postpone the accounting. In fact, in reality, the create accounting, what happens if it will be done? What happens if it will be running? 
on a periodic basis for the your uh, receipt accounting for the cost accounting for the payables receivables projects etc etc everything will be running on every every 30 minutes or every 45 minutes or one hour or whatever it is they will all be running so nobody will be running it actually man it's very impossible to run manually so they will be scheduling it as a srs my srs is a standard request submission ebis so here also what happens we can very well schedule it and then do it so now the create execution what happens the create accounting execution report is running now so now we have a look at it now once it is completed we'll have a look at it now we'll not complete it we'll do that so we'll now have a look at it thank you so even though accounting is not mandatory for this training i'm just accounting it accounting can be done only distribution creation is very important as far as this account thing is concerned so as far as our receipt accounting is concerned the distribution is very important so we done it now so we are done accounting also we can republish export to pdf so go there and then we open up this report and look at it now <coughs> So it's the final accounted from the account. So there are invoices 28, number of events process. So many things are coming actually from the US primary ledger 21. I know that. So invalid journal entries are all actually from the US primary ledger. So that is what I was saying. Okay, transfer generated. There are so many things that are invalid actually. Withholding taxes is not problem. It is only in the US IFRS second ledger and not on our primary actually. So second ledger is now having a lot of issues actually. So many issues are there. And US primary withholding is also having. So the accounting date is an is an open on a future interval now. Right? 17th October 16. Now right? they may have closed it actually. So because of it, so many errors are coming. Right? We don't worry about the errors now. Right? So we'll not. No, the, the, so many things on the financials will be looking at it to a great extent actually. We will now click on what validated. It will not say it is accounted also. Click on validated. It will not say it is clearly unaccounted or is coming now. Right? Click on the hyperlink. Fine, it is not accounted actually. Now let us now push this into the costing area. We are going to push it in the costing area. So, for for receipt accounting to push in the costing area, it is the transfer transactions from receiving to costing, and then for the payables to be pushed into the costing area, fine, it is go there. Click on it. Will not push it in the costing area. Fine. After the distribution is created, we can very well push it. Fine. It is called transfer transactions from cost to cost. It's called so transfer transaction from cost to cost. Cost to cost. This is for payables to the interface tables of receipt accounting. Transfer transactions, cost to cost. I want to do it. So transfer transactions from cost to cost. Transfer transactions from cost. Then I click on search and transfer transactions. Transfer transactions from search. Transfer transactions. Transfer transactions. Transfer transactions. Inventory costing, receiving costing. Transfer transaction from cost to costing, transfer transaction from inventory costing, production to costing, receiving to costing. Now, right? Transfer. It will not be transaction. Actually, I'm not sure. Okay. Transfer. <clears throat> transfer cost. Right. Transfer is not a transaction. Actually, it will be different. Idea. I forgot the name of the concurrent. Actually, uh, yeah. Transfer cost to cost management is not transfer transactions. Actually. Is the transfer cost to cost management is the one transfer cost to cost management. So the whatever distributions have been created in the payables area that will be transferred into the interface tables of receipt accounting. So click on submit. It will now come into the what happens there? Go the cutoff date. Up to what date you want to do it now? Fine. Whatever has been uh, what happens there created up to thirtieth of this thing. You know, we need to click on submit. Now remember, we are not paid for ten. Ten quantities is not paid. So that is where the real work comes into picture for the procurement managers. Actually, you know, transport it. Only ninety quantities have been, uh, or rather, rather invoice has been created. Otherwise, it will be paid. Actually, so we are now creating the distributions also, and then we are now pushing it to the costing area. Now, this will be reflecting on the main area. And this, what happens? The difference actually. So now, difference is what six point. Uh, what happens? Six point seven zero four million actually. So you can now see six point seven zero four million is about. So once when I do the distribution creation, my this will be getting affected. Actually. The difference will be getting affected. Six point seven zero four million. Whatever it will not increase now. Fine, fine. So for ten thousand, it will not increase by ten thousand now. So ten thousand is what six point seven zero five, I think probably. Seven zero five. So six point seven zero four will now become six point seven zero five actually. Fine. By ten thousand, it will not increase along with the taxes or something like that. Blah blah blah. So it won't be six point seven zero four. The difference will be more actually. 
So we'll now have a little bit of space. So it is now being pushed into the interface tables of a uh, receipt accounting now, right? Transfer cost to cost management will now push the difference. Now. So now we are going to calculate the difference once when you run what you are telling about. The transfer cost to cost management is now succeeded actually. So the transfer cost to cost management is now succeeded. We'll now go there. We'll now do the create distributions. We'll now go on and get the distribution. So if you click on refresh now and refresh, again, there won't be any change at all. You know, the 6.74 and 6.704, fine, everything is same. So let us now go there and then we'll now create the distribution. Now. Click on the receipt accounting distribution. We're now going to get the receipt accounting distribution. It will now come to the receiving area. So click on submit. <coughs> so you're not running it. So 913 is a, uh, what's called the ESS job, which is running for creating the distribution now. Right? So we're not creating the distribution. Good place. So now we are now creating the distribution. Actually. So now the create accounting has now run the import process. So now previously in the interface area, we are now uh, received the material, uh, transaction from the inventory, inventory receiving. Now we are received from payables uh, distribution. Right? This, now, this time we are now received from payable. So that is now getting imported actually. So once when it is completed, what happens, you can very well uh, do the further activity. So the import has now completed. Now what happens, the sub process of receipt accounting distribution has now happened. So once when it's completed, the main distribution will be getting completed. So after the import is completed, we have to perform the receipt accounting distributions also we have to create it. Right? Once when it's completed, then what happens, we will now be, everything is available. So 100 has been received, 90 has been paid, 10 is not paid actually. That we are going to analyze. So now the receipt accounting distribution is now completed. Fine. The sub process is also completed. Fine. The distribution now created along with the payables invoice. So the everything is succeeded. We'll now go there. We will now what happens? Do the refreshments. So the unmatched accrual balances is going to be affected. The unmatched accrual balances. So you usually pay six point seven zero four. You will now see it has to go for six point seven zero five. I think I will now refresh it. Now that's it. So go there. So 6.704 only because it's not showing me exactly here. Right? It's not showing because of the huge amount. And so what happens is the millions now. Right? So it's not exactly showing me. So I will now click on the, what happens on the difference itself. Right? Click on the difference. On the infolet, I'm now clicking on this one. Right? It will now go there, click on it, click on this. It will now come over here. It will now come to this place. So let me query the purchase order number and search the results. Okay? No, there are plenty of things that are in reality. What happens? You'll be having so many unmatched ones will be there. So let us not go there. I will not query on this one. What is the query more? The purchase order number is what? We'll not go there. One six four point one five seven is it? Find that one. We'll not query on the B one. So one six four one five seven. Find that one. We'll not enter it. We're not entering it. So it now shows attribute bill to be showing the point. So it's not showing you the other. So there is a difference of what. 1700 in the minus actually. There is a difference of 1700. What happens? This is, this is not being paid actually. So if you go down and see this now, find that one. So it will not show you the distributions basically. Find how much has not been paid actually. So 50 each transaction quantity, 50 each actually. Receiving, receiving inspections, 50 each. Not showing this one. Uh, purchase order number is what? 164157. 164157 is not showing me. 164. Attribute built to business unit is required actually. Fine. So there is a built to business unit is now missing on our PO actually. So on the PO, fine, fine. the built to business unit is missing actually. So if you go to the creative voice, the built to business unit is missing actually. In the distribution is to do there. So something is missing on this now, fine. So we are unable to do it actually. The built to distribution is not actually. They're not done everything perfectly. Built to business unit is missing actually. Uh, built to business unit. Fine. So this may be because of what I know that right click and then duplicate now. Fine. It may be because of what in the common options something is missing actually. In this case, fine. they have messed up on the common options. Fine. Click on set up all elements. No go there. Click on it. Click on it. No go there. Click on search. Is that manage? Is for payables and then procurement. So there here they have missed it because of it the building is not coming properly. 
So maybe this place, man of common options for everybody to believe in that plan. So here they made something, you know, Kuri for this one of time. He was not able to have. So they made so many changes like this. So more than every account is now taken. So here the middle location has been changed. And that is the reason that we are now coming. Let's say the same thing. Save the one. Save the one then. So click on save and close. So there, this is now done. I will now go on then. Go on then. Have a look at the invoice options also. I will now have a look at the invoice options. Go to the financials. Manage invoice options. Manage invoice options. Options present in the container. So go to the manage invoice options. So select the scope now. Select the scope. <clears throat> Select that and click on apply and go to task. Go there and then it is a US one. And then make a search. Click on search. And I'm searching for it. So go there. Click on save and close now. In fact, what happens? I normally create my own structure and then demonstrate everything. So here there is no location coming in the picture actually. So we are making a problem. So we are now corrected everything. So in this place, fine. So if you go on and see this one, it's not showing you anything at all. So US one copies of the business unit duty unit is not coming. And here uh, 165157 is not having a problem because it's not showing me at all. Attribute built to business unit is required. So that is not having a proper business unit. So I will do one thing. I will now create the next PO 164, 158, and then complete everything, and then I will now come over here. Fine. So because uh, I, I cannot, what happens? I cannot do anything at all. Fine. My my unit is not coming at all here. This place 164, 157 is not. Coming. So let me create one 164, 158, and then show it to you now. Until the other time, what happens? I will now pass it, and then I will now complete everything. So I changed the <coughs> common options for payables and procurement with my. Organization, my location Seattle, and then made the complete one. I made a new PO as 164158. Then for the same 100 quantity, it's 100,000 actually. The GRN number is not 51773, it's 51772, it's 51773 actually. And then I click on it. And then I created the invoices, and then I transferred it to the cost management, transfer cost to cost management. And then I did it. And then afterwards, now I am now creating the distribution. So I'm creating the receipt accounting distribution. So this is now completed. So the sub process is now running. Now see. So once it is completed, we'll now go and then refresh it actually. And now completed. So we'll now wait for the main process to complete now. So this has to get completed. This is also completed. We'll now go on then go to the receipt accounting area. We'll click on the we'll now go that click on it. We will now refresh it actually. So we'll now refresh it. So 6.704. So click on refresh now. <coughs> If you refresh it, you will not see any changes there on this one. So go that here it is not showing any change at all. So now there is no double actually. 110 has now become 220 actually. 110 has now become 220 because of two uh, receipts actually. And because of the showing as well. So click on the difference now. Fine. Click on the difference, it will now open up. From the info let, I am now clicking on the yellow color. Now I will now go to the purchase order number. Now. Fine. So I will now go to the purchase order number and then query on the view. It's 164158. 164158 of the one five hundred. So the attribute built to business unit is required. Still is not coming on this number. Attribute built to business unit is required. <clears throat> so built to business unit is required. So we have to what uh, we had to query on the built to business unit also. So uh, the built to business unit is also required for querying it actually. So we are unable to query on this now. We are unable to query on this now. So go to on it. So what we will do is we will not go via info let now. We will not go via this now. Click on it. Now go that on it. So we will now go to the accrual reconciliation area. Right? Accrual clearing, you know, and not reconciliation, accrual clearing. Adjust receipt accrual balances. So in this area, it is now asking for the bill to meet. Right? So adjust receipt accrual balances. I'm now going to click on it. We will go there. So the bill to business unit is what starts with. I will now say US1. The US one, I'm not going to make a search. There, you are unable to see it now directly. So, we are not doing it now. The built in business unit is what US one. So, we are searching for it. So, we'll now go to the query mode now. Go to the query mode. 
in this place, 164, right? 158 is a one entry. Now make a search for it. Different search. So it now shows you everything. So if you make a search for this, it's not, the outside is not showing anything. So it shows you 10,950 actually. Right? 950 is uh, basically the taxes, and then 10,000 is not done. If you go further, 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 it will not show you how much a quantity net received is 100, net invoice is 90, and then if you go further, it will not show you 10 quantities is the difference actually. So the difference has got accumulated over here. Received and receiving inspection is what this one. My invoice is now created for 90,000. So this is the difference actually. So the difference is what? Minus 10,950 is not paid at all. Right? This much of a difference is there actually. So go there, click on it. So we can even write off this difference actually. We can even write off this difference. So what I will do is I will now go to this place. I will now go there, click on it. I will now have a look at it now. I will now go to the receipt accounting overview. So I will now say, I have asked him certain things now, like what was your financial uh, statement must be, what was your financial turnover must be 1 million every year. So they are unable to provide at all. So we are going to write off, we will not be paying at all. So we will now go to the accrual write off and then we will not write it off. That, that difference we are going to write off. So really speaking, there should not be any yellow color at all. But in reality, there will be so much of a difference actually. So the procurement managers has to solve this problem of what happens here, this thing. This much has to be solved actually. So it is not at solved. And so what happens, we are now going to write it off. So we'll now go there, click on it. We will now write it off on this. <clears throat> Adjust receipt accounting. So we are going to write it off actually. We'll now go there, click on it. So we will now write it off. We'll now go to the adjust accrual balances. Now. Go to the adjust accrual balances. We'll now go to the adjust accrual balances. So bill to business unit is what starts with and go there. The US one, we go there. So the profit center business unit is what again US one. One of them is a must have click on one search, one search for it. So build a unit find that. It's a peak person that starts with starts with click on search now. Built a unit and then profit center business unit do the same actually. So that click on it. So there is no accrual write off at all. Fine. There is nothing has been written off actually. So we'll now go there, click on it. In this area itself, we have to write it off. Fine. So okay. and then we are going to write it off. So go to the actions now and go to the actions and then what happens? Adjust the balances. We are going to write it off. So go to the actions. We are now selected this line and go to the actions and then go to the adjust balances. So we are going to adjust the balances. Go to that. <coughs> Supplier not provided the annual turnover. So the annual turnover has not been provided. So annual turnover he has not provided actually because of which we are writing it off. So that cannot be paid at all. That much of a money, 10 quantities cannot be paid at all. So we are writing it. So what was uh, accrual adjustments were processed for the selected transaction. Code. And minus 10,000. Now, if you go to the adjust accrual balances, it will not show you how much has been adjusted. How much has been adjusted? You know, say, if you make a search, now, it will not show you. So this much has been adjusted. By 10,000. This has been written off, actually. This has been written off. So 10,950 has been written off. So it will not go down, it will not show you the radius also on this, how much has been written off. Right? Now uh, he says that okay, if, I, if you go, go to the main screen, it will not show you the write off. The write off will not come over here. If you click on the refresh icon, it will not say how much has been written off. Right? So 11k, so 10,900 is approximately 11 So this much has been written off. Right? So your ultimate object of a procurement manager is what to make it null actually. Fine. For whatever this seven six point seven million has not been paid with the payables actually. Fine. So between the receipt accounting and then your uh, what happens your payables accounting. Fine. This is basically payables accrual and then receipt accrual. Fine. Receipt accrual and payables accrual. The difference is this much. Fine. Payables has got accrued. Fine. Payables accruals and receipt accruals. This much is the difference and then there's not been paid. So this much you have to nullify it. So what they normally do is they will now run the receipt accounting reconciliation actually. They will not run this one. Fine. So I will not say it. Fine. Recon percentage. Fine. So we will not run this concurrent. Receipt accounting reconciliation. So prepare receivables to general only. We will not say percentage. Recon C. Reconciliation report actually. Reconciliation report of the work. No query for this one. Reconciliation. I forgot the name of the task actually. So accrual reconciliation request is accrual reconciliation. They will not run it. 
So once when you run the accrual reconciliation report, it will not tell you, they will not run it on a daily basis actually. So we had to pass on the parameter. The business unit is what you have done. Accrual account, you can leave it back to find whether from transaction date, find the very important. I will now say 18th. Also, I will not make it up for 18th. Hi, Nana here. <clears throat> See, the problem is what the instances are getting refreshed every two days also. One second. <clears throat> One second. Okay. We'll be running this accrual reconciliation report from more than from item to so on so item find more than two So only today, only I'm doing it fine. There will be only one thing now. Click on submit and the remaining are all okay. Fine, click on submit. So they will be running this report on a daily basis. And then they will not see how much has got what happens a reconciled actually by way of writing off. Actually. So they will not run it. And then they will not see the output of it. And when we use a report, we can very well publish it actually. So we can even very well publish it actually. So this is no running now. There's no completed. And then we'll not have a look at it. Click on the report. And then we'll not have a look at it. No. Publish the output. Go down and then publish the output. So they will be running it on a daily basis and then see how much has been reconciled for the day and then how much is pending actually. So making the difference zero is a daunting task for the procurement managers. They have to make it zero. To make it zero. And no, no accrual record is coming. So something is a problem. So because of it, it is not coming. Otherwise, it will be giving you a good output now. Fine. And then this will be basically customized for everybody now. And they will all be customizing that. So it will not done. So this is the one now. Fine. So over your visit. So they will now uh, see the difference of that here. What I'm going to refresh it will be finding that accrual return off will be coming as what 11k approximately. So we'll now go there, click on it, uh, and then he'll now go to the adjust visit accrual balances. <clears throat> so in this place, if you see 10k is adjusted, and this place will go there. Here's one, and I will now say starts. Here's one, and I will now give a search now. This one starts with you. The subject is not coming. Now the supplier is saying, sir, I will not, <coughs> I will not provide you the financials. <coughs> Our 1 million turnover, we are giving you the documentation. So they have, <coughs> they have provided the documentation for this. <coughs> now we are going to reverse it back because we are going to make a payment. So we are going to re reverse the adjustments. So click on the reverse adjustments and click on the reverse adjustments. So we are not going to make a payment now, fine. <coughs> provided by supplier. So doc is not provided the supply factor. Okay, 10,950 is now getting reversed. So the adjust, it will now vanish. It will now vanish fine. Accrual reverse contract is process for the selection transaction. Okay, 10,950. So if you go to the open accrual balances, it will be appearing there. <coughs> you go there and then put the purchase order number fine. 164.164158. 164 yeah. So 164158 is the one fine. Here it will be appearing. So this is not pending for payment actually. So here, uh, what happens? Here's two. What happens? A query on this one. Fine. Click on start it. And go there. I'm going to put viewers one, and then make a search, and then afterwards make a subquery on this. Okay. okay. Subquery is also executed. So this much is not pending. So in reality, if you don't do it now, fine. There will be plenty available there. There will be plenty which will be available for what happens adjustment. So we had to adjust it. So adjusting manually becomes very, very difficult. Right? Every day you select it and then what happens, you go to actions and then go to adjust, right? it becomes very difficult. So we can even write a rule for this one. They normally write a rule and then they will not execute the rule actually. We are not going to write a rule actually. So we will not write a rule actually. We will not go to what? Manage accrual clearing rules. I am going to create it. Click on the manage accrual clearing rules. Manage accrual clearing rules. <laughs> so manage accrual clearing rules, I am not going to go there. And then here, what happens? You go there and then click on it. So go there, click on it. 
So we'll now go to the manage accrual clearing goods that we are going to clear. Now. So we'll now say US1, fine, give it that. So US1, fine, click on go now, fine, I'm going to click on go, what I'm going to do. So you are coming, click on plus and then I'm going to create a rule. Now. Okay. So let me create a rule. Now. We are going to create a rule actually. <clears throat> So the rule has to be created in the very proper manner. I'm going to expand it. Not this one. Fine. Expand the down arrow. Fine. We are not going to get a rule actually. <coughs> now we are going to write the if condition. Fine. I have a document on this now. I'm going to go to space. So I have a document on this rule clearing rules actually. Class template. Supply registration. There is some document on accrual clearing actually. Reconciliation rules, yes. The one. 56 is the reconciliation rules, fine. On the additional document on four. Fine. We'll now open up the rule. We will now write a rule now. We are going to clear it normally. So go there. So if accrual line dot accrual amount difference, if I know accrual line dot accrual amount difference, the one now. Fine. So we will not expand it now. The if condition is what accrual line dot accrual amount difference we are going to do it now. So we'll now say drop it down. Accrual line. Magnify it, drop it down. And the accrual line dot accrual amount difference. Accrual amount difference. Go there. So go down. So this is the one now. Right? Accrual amount difference, the one. I know that. Of this, I'm now going to choose the long. The long. So accrual amount difference, so long value I'm choosing it. So Accrual line dot accrual amount difference long value and long value between so and so so and so. So between it's not going to be between. So go to this place and then we'll now write a between. So click on the between between. So go there between and go there. So click on magnifier again. So it is minus ten thousand fifteen actually. So we have to put it as what within double quotes actually. I will now say within now double quotes nine thousand. It's minus nine thousand. Think about that. Minus nine thousand to let's say plus fifteen thousand. Double quote like fifteen thousand. So ours will not be cleared at all because ours is minus ten thousand something something right, with nine thousand. So it will not be what happens it cleared at all. You know, make a mistake and afterwards we'll not tell the mistake. So click on it. So the first line, and then and what happens is the second line we had add, we had add the next line. We now add the next line. We now go that we want. We will now make a simple query now, right? Simple test now. Click on simple test. We now add it. There is a second line we are going to add. It. So what is the line? It says what accrual line dot invoice accrual amount. Fine. Whatever is accrued, fine for payment actually. Fine. Invoice accrual amount must be more than zero actually. Fine. So if the accrual amount, what happens if the if this thing is going more than amount? So it's what accrual line dot invoice accrual amount. Accrual line dot invoice accrual amount. Drop it down. Accrual line dot invoice accrual amount. What? Not to the invoice accrual amount. Invoice accrual amount. We have to choose. So this is the one. Not to the long value for this. Go down. Not to the long value. Go the long value. <coughs> is what happens is more than zero. It's not more than that. More than. So I am not going to give a constant value of this. Now make a constant. So put a constant here. Fine. It's a constant actually. And then the value is zero. That means what? The line has been paid actually. Right? The line has been paid. So it has been paid. It, it may have been partially paid actually. So what is so invoice accrual amount, fine, whatever is not, it's not more than zero actually, no paid actually, invoice. So if these two conditions are met, fine, that means what is the one, fine. Then we are going to have, what happens if we are not going to add this line now, fine. Then we'll now come into which, then we are going to add. And remember, we are given not uh, this value, fine, it is 9,000 minus, how much is what? Minus 10,950, so it will not work at all on this. We're going to fail, and then afterwards we'll not correct. So you go there, fine, click on it, we'll now go to assert new. Fine. Click on asset, then, then condition. So, go there. so writing is in this fusion is really very, very horrible actually. Fine. You need to know ADF actually. So, this has been given by only by technical, my, my technical guy has given this. Fine. 
So with this, we are doing it up. So here we are going to make for six entries now. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six. These six entries we are going to do. So accrual clear amount. First one we are leaving it. Accrual clear amount we are going to go for it. Will not drop down. Okay. Right? What is the new now? Right? Asset new. Here, what happens? Asset new. Clear accruals now. Right? Clear accruals. So drop it down. Will not clear accruals. Clear accruals. And clear accruals. We are going to clear the accruals actually. Right? This is basically adjustment. Right? So it's one now. Right? So click on the edit button has come up. Right? Click on the edit button. So the edit button, there are six entries we are going to make now. Right? First one we are doing it. So this one we are going to do it now. Right? Accrual clear amount we are going to do it now. Right? So here we are not going to do it now. <coughs> so accrual clear amount. So accrual clear amount is what? Accrual line dot accrual clear amount. So accrual clear amount is what? Go there. Uh, it has to have what? Yeah, what's called yeah, a yeah, magnifier is coming up. So here, what is that? It's called accrual line dot accrual clear amount. Accrual line, fine. So click on the magnifier. Accrual line, fine. Accrual clear amount. So go there. So it's accrual clear amount. So go down now. Is the accrual clear amount? Uh, where is it here? Accrual clear amount. Accrual clear amount. And expand it now. Again, long way. So the first entry of the six is now completed. Now go there and see. Next is what? The rule one. So I'll now say within brackets, the rule point one. I'm putting it on. So uh, one second. <clears throat> now to put query. Point one. Other. I'm within double code here. So next is what? Go there. So third line is blank, and then fourth line is what? AP accrual amount. Right? On the AP accrual amount, we are going to do AP accrual amount. In the AP accrual amount and accrual line dot total invoice accrual amount. So accrual line go there. Accrual line dot total invoice accrual amount. So total invoice accrual amount. Go down, go down. So total visit accrual amount is that total invoice accrual amount is. So total invoice accrual amount is here. So total invoice accrual amount expanded. So long value we choose here. The total invoice accrual amount. So you're not going to fetch this thing now, right? So it is one, what was that? The total invoice accrual amount. The next one is what? CMR accrual amount. My accrual line dot total visit accrual amount. So here we are going to see the result accrual amount. The total, total visit accrual amount. The long way there. So accrual line total result accrual amount. Total result accrual amount. I will explain it. And then I will not choose the long value. So click on the long value. Click on it. So by which we have now completed what? Four of the entries now out of six. Next is what? CMR PO distribution ID. So accrual line dot purchase order distribution identifier. So go there. We will now go to the purchase order distribution identifier. We are going to choose. So purchase order distribution identifier. So it is already there in the top. It's going to expand it. And then we will now do the long value. Long value. And click on OK. It is not done. And then afterwards, the next one is what? The final one is what? CMR PO line, line location end. Accrual line dot purchase order schedule identifier. So click on it. Click on it. Purchase order schedule identifier. Click on it. So it's a purchase order schedule identifier. So purchase order <coughs> schedule identifier. So this is the one. And expand it. And then we'll be doing it now. So all the six are now given up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Click on OK. We have passed down all the parameters first. So click on save now. We are going to validate it. So click on validate. It will now validate whether everything is then only you can save it actually. Only when you validate, you can save it actually. We are validating it. If there is any error, it will not show the errors now. So no validation errors or warnings are found. So we are validating yeah. it. Then we can save it. And click on save. By which whatever we are not completed writing the rule actually. So the rule is now saved. Fine, save and close. We will now run this rule now. Fine, from minus 9,000 to plus 15,000. So if you go and then see ours now, fine. Ours is what? It is a minus 10,500 or something. Fine. It's now beyond that paper. So I'll now go that moment. So 164, you will now see this one. Uh, 164, fine. Uh, what are the P1 number? Is that 158? 164, 158 is a 1.1 then 3. 
you go on and create what happens it is now beyond that 9000 10950 so if i run the uh, our rule it will not clear at all you will not you know on the rule so you no know, see you no know, what happens a clear receipt accrual balance is formed so it is a ess job we are now created a rule long time we are going to clear it I'll click on the create receipt accrual balances so if you go on the create and you know, the business unit is what the us one you know, like that one so click on submit now fine click on submit and then you know submit it <coughs> so the process is submitted you know so we will now wait for the concurrent to complete now so is that so this is the way we can do it now this way we can very well do it <coughs> So clear is it accrual balances? So we write a rule and then we will not say from this amount to this amount you clear everything. So like that you can do it. So this is accrual clearing or the accrual reconciliation is a big headache for the procurement managers and then they have to run it on a periodic basis. Actually. So the sub process is not running. So clear is it accruing accrual balances sub process? So it might have cleared something now, fine, because the nine thousand so many may be there now, fine. It might, it might have cleared hours, may not have cleared, but it have cleared many many things. <clears throat> so it is now running now fine we will now wait for some time and then afterwards we will now come back and then we will now have it right? so it has now completed everything we will now go to the adjustment and go to the click on it we will now make a search again now. and click on search for this one for this one we will now search for it in the open approval and click on search <clears throat> so it is not clear actually <laughs> <laughs> we will now go then modify a rule so it is not, minus 10950 is not clear we will now go then modify the rule we will now go to the manager accrual clearing rules we will now modify the rule actually yes so thank you so we now expand it and then we now modify the rule so in this place what are we go there click on it. so i will now put minus 19000 so now it is covered actually So click on okay. So minus nineteen thousand is uh, now covered. And click on validate now. You now validate, and then afterwards only can save it. Go down there. So no validation is upon. So click on save and close now. Now this time you will again run. You will know, you know, run again. You will know, run again. So clear. Is it a accrual balance? So click on. You will know, run it again. So it's the years one. What I am. So click on submit now. Finally run again. <coughs> So it is now running uh, this place. So these two concurrents are now running. So we will wait for it to get completed. Actually, so the current balance is not passed. So we will now wait for it to complete. Now it has got completed. We will now go to the adjust and then we will now make a search on this US one and then one six four one five eight. We are going to make a search. Make a search. Now it has to vanish. It would have got adjusted actually, and it has now vanished. Actually. So if you go to the adjust accrual balances, you can now see this in this place. What if you want to make a search? It is there. It is already adjusted actually, and so many are adjusted actually. Right? There are so many which are adjusted. So if you go on and query on this now, and you can so many are adjusted. Okay, because so many are there. So one six four and one five eight is the one. So many are adjusted. Right? So ours is not shown here. And if you don't do it, what are you doing? So adjustment is a what happens is a dynamic process. So we have to discuss the supplier, and then discuss the purchase officers, and then finally do the adjustment. So if you go there and then click on the done now, fine. So so many are adjusted, and then it will not show you so much of a value. Fine. If you click on refresh now, fine, it will be showing you so much of a value. So minus five sixty four k, fine. So much has been written. So accrual clearing and then accrual reconciliation are the big big job for the procurement managers. And then they have to ultimately what happens? Make the yellow line as zero. Yellow line as zero. So this one. And then finally, what happens after having done this? They will again go and then create the distribution. They will locate the distribution. And then afterwards, they will now review it. And then again do the create accounting. So this create accounting will be running on a regular basis. And then finally, it will be done. So this completes the what happens? You are accrual right off, and then the reconciliation, and then trying to bring down the yellow value to zero. Using a rule is a very tough one. Fine, do that. And then it will now give you a lot of idea. Fine, do that. It will now see understand about how difficult it is for the procurement managers to what happens on a day to day basis. How to do the write off? Fine, because if something is accrued and then it is not paid, fine. We have to analyze the reason for why you are not paid. It. And then finally, write it off. If the supplier is not obliged your requirement, you will now write it off. And then that will be written off actually. Fine. So that way it is. 
by the now and then we'll not try to meet on some other session actually fine this session we have got lots of issues and then uh, you know learn a lot on this now right? so much of a learning is there on this right now <clears throat>